Hey kids, you want to see what print-on-demand card games look like 14 years ago? Of course you do. Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and this is a game from 2007 called Monster Tykes. One big thing about Monster Tykes is that it was a print-on-demand game from 2007. Print-on-demand is about what it sounds like. With most card games, when you want to uh, get some, some cards produced, you have to make like a nice big order, get the standard box, talk to print companies, and you know, make like thousands upon thousands of boxes and product in order to get what you want. Print on demand is you only have product printed when it's asked for. For example, if you set up a website online, um, a place like Gamecraft or something like that, and they will only print the components of those games um, when they are asked for. So if somebody orders a copy of your game, then the, the, a, a fresh copy gets run off. It's kind of like a pizza place, but for card games. Uh, print on demand has, uh, you're gonna see that this print on demand uh, stuff from 14 years ago is not that great. It has changed a lot. Uh, an example of a print on demand game is actually Keyforge. Keyforge is like a 100% print on demand game because every card has a unique card back and a unique random setting, so they have it basically, every single game is print on demand. And there are a lot of things you can do with print on demand, but one thing I'm gonna get out of the way, one thing you cannot really do with print on demand is make money. Print on demand is expensive, not just consumers, but for the people making the product. It is, of course, expensive because you're basically getting custom kit put together every time rather than making a large bulk order. Um, I'm looking at print on demand services. I'm looking at Game Crafter and their cost for a booster box, just the box, just the packaging will run you nearly as much as a booster box and its contents from some shop in China if you make an order of at least like 2,500, 5,000 pieces or something like that. Um, there are still certainly benefits to print on demand, but don't think you're gonna be the next big money-making monster hit doing it. Um, print on demand is great if you are working on a small scale, if you don't mind that you're not selling a lot of product, um, selling it specifically to a niche market, that's certainly fine. Um, one thing I think it's great for is mock-ups, like the Strike Engine mock-ups that I was sent. These are print on demand mock-ups. These are nice if you want to like go to a, like a game show, a trade show, um, you want to have something that you can show to a potential investor or, you know, publisher or game store, something to generate interest. If you have something that looks like this, that has the cards, that has the box, that looks nice and professional, that's a really good thing to do. Um, if you want to make promo cards, if you can find a print-on-demand service that can match the quality of your standard printing and you get need to get, like, some, some promo cards or special event cards run off, like, ASAP, um, a print-on-demand service is good for that. Um, it's good for selling in foreign markets where you would lose money on just the shipping alone. If you like were in Ukraine or something and you wanted to sell your game to the United States, a print on demand service will bypass all of the customs, all of the shipping, all of that, because the product gets manufactured in America. You could say the same for a lot of other places. Um, uh, but otherwise, print on demand, if you're trying to like actually make it big in the industry, print on demand is really only good for getting your foot in the door. Because a thing about print on demand is really they'll just kind of let anybody do it. You know, if, if little Jimmy brings in his refrigerator doodles and it's like, can I have a game too? The 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 manufacturer will be like, sure, kid, as long as you as long as you pay for it. Um, anyway, getting down to brass tacks, this is how it looked in 2007, and yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to see from here, but a lot of this stuff is pretty amateur hour. Like, here's what the booster packs look like. They're not like the like the foil packs or like the, the trading card packs you see. It is literally like a shipping envelope with like the, the flap and everything, like like the glued down flap with a sticker on it. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very basic. Very simple. Uh, of course, we have the the booster box, which, ooh, yeah, you heard that, didn't you? The the sound of it of it being peeled off of the table. Um, that's because this is this is you know just straight up printed onto some 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 basic like cardstock cardboard, some basic like uh, looks like uh, looks like semi gloss like pearlescent like cardboard, and it, it's not like um, a lot of like professional cards like card games and stuff like that. They tend to have like a like a coating to protect the ink and stuff like the Pokemon box. The Pokemon box will not 
because it has like a like a like a coating on it because of how it's printed, um, it won't stick to the table the same way. I, I mean, I'm, I'll I'll try to get it stick. I've been letting it sit there for a while, um, but yeah, it's a it's it's a pretty funny it's a pretty funny shape for a booster box too. It's a, it's a large tuck box, and uh, you can see I've opened most of these. Um, and then, of course, we have the starter deck, which tells us the rules. Uh, a quick, brief, uh, brief uh, elaboration on what this is. Monster Tykes, it's a game about, like, uh, kids who are, like, the descendants of, like, famous monsters and heroes having, like, a schoolyard brawl. And the goal is to make it so that your opponent no longer has any kids out playing. They, like, get hurt and go crying home to mommy or something like that. So it's, 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 it's a schoolyard tussle sort of game. Although, one thing I'm not entirely clear on is are these kids like actually like monsters and wizards and stuff or are they playing make-believe? I actually kind of find the second one more endearing where it's like a bunch of kids playing make-believe. Um, not sure how that's meant to parlay into like a really effective card game design. Um, and they're school kids. One thing you've noticed is that there is a, uh, there's a naughty booster and a nice booster and that's because this is a game that uses good and evil. And, you know, evil decks can only use evil characters, good decks can only use good characters. There are, of course, neutral characters. Um, and you, you can see we kind of have our knockoff Draco Malfoy over here. This is 2007, after all. Um, but one thing I am going to bring up, you know, if you wanted to make a game based on school kids, rather than making it naughty and nice, how about you make it like the different cliques in the school? Like you have the popular kids and the jocks and the art kids and the outsiders and the nerds. And maybe there, maybe there's like a school fair coming up, and they're competing to make the best booth while trying to sabotage the booth of the other groups. And you know, like the artsy kids are all like really earnest about getting their booth looking perfect and setting up, and the outsiders are all about sabotage. And hey, <laughs> did I just make a game just out of thin air? That's a game right there. Um, okay, now we have the starter box. You can see it's compared to like the Pokemon V Battle box. The V Battle box is pretty large as far as as far as boxes are concerned, but the, 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 the Tykes box is actually a bit larger. Um, it is also very sticky. Oh my, oh wow, that actually left, that actually left some of the ink on my mat. It's fine, I know how to get this stuff off. You can actually get it off, believe it or not, with hand sanitizer. And right now, everybody has a pretty good supply of hand sanitizer for some reason. Um, but yeah, I can, I can, I can clean that, that's nothing. Um, but, uh, the, 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 the big thing about the, yeah, you can, you can feel like, like how, how the ink is raised and stuff. This is not really like an archival thing. Although, yeah, there it is. Rapid Pod Publishing might be a bit out of focus from how it is right there. But yeah, that's, uh, some, someplace out of Kentucky. But yeah, um, I honestly, I'm not sure where this originated from. I don't know if this is like a proof of concept by the company or if it was, uh, if it was uh, sold to them by the company, although... Comic Sans, eh. or is that Lafayette? No, I, I think that's comic. I think that's Comic Sans because uh, Lafayette. Yeah, th this is this is all Comic Sans because Lafayette tends to. Yeah, I'm not gonna leave that on the. I'm gonna put that on top of there because Lafayette. I don't think has lowercase. Um, Lafayette is the good-looking comic script that I sometimes use. Um, but anyway, the the real kicker on this thing is how it was packaged. Prepare to be unreasonably upset at the uh, at, at a box so of course we have our rules and you know that's on a on a pretty basic folded thing but wait till you get a load of how the cards are packed like like this came to me sealed this is how the cards were originally packed <laughs> yep um although i i I, uh, I did change one thing here the decks were originally in their own rubber bands but yes they were just loose cards wrapped in a rubber band with a couple of cardboard dividers this is not how you ship a game like i said these days most print on demand services have like properly sized uh, tuck boxes and everything um but this this woof. i mean even game crafter at least has the courtesy to put their things in little baggies but yep we get the rules we get uh we get uh two pieces of cardboard and we get our decks here we have tad black moon who is our uh, our obvious uh, draco malfoy analog and billy the barbarian who is our 
our main hero kid looks a little bit like uh, like the kid from Nintendo Power. But of course, we also have Petey Cottonspell, who is a uh, like like a, like a cross between Harry Potter and Chucky Finster. Um, the idea is you're basically rolling to try to defeat your opponent's armor or magic resistance on one of these six sided die. Um, and of course, the characters get the little bonuses. Like this guy gets plus two on his rolls to bully. Uh, you can tell which ones are naughty and which ones are nice. It's not really well defined. It's probably something that should receive an icon on the card because uh, the naughty kids have a black line. The the nice kids have a green line around them. Uh, so it looks like it is 100%. Oh, there we go. Donkey Doo is brown. So he's a neutral character. He could be on either side. Uh, neutral cards. The Magic Wall of Protection is a good card. Uh, here's the thing. They say like spell and stuff in papyrus font. Oh, jumping goodness. Let's zoom in a bit on this. Yeah, jumping goodness. This is this is a layout artist's nightmare. Um, we have the problem where they just kind of have a textured back, but they just kind of slap the text onto it without really doing much to help make the make the cards more pronounced. Like let's let's pull out some Pokemon cards. Let me let me show you a, a brief something here because Pokemon's cards have had a similar problem lately, where the the Pokemon cards are just kind of slapped on there. Um, well, one thing you'll notice is that they have kind of a custom gouache to them where the areas where the text goes on these cards actually like it's like slightly lightened here so that the, the the text which is written down here has a chance of standing out and being easier to read. I still think it's kind of bad. The most recent sets, the, the, the sword and shield sets have especially had it kind of bad, but you'll notice that they have like the custom gouache where everything is uh, brightened in the middle. They also have a number of things to help keep the keep the the card structure together like they have these uh these bars here which actually kind of exceed the border a bit the uh the artwork is nicely framed it actually has a, a tiny bit of drop shadow to make it spring off the the board a bit there's a lot of things that pokemon cards do to help make their cards to, to help out with their their layout and presentation um in a way that this really doesn't you can see the gouache is not custom you got this big dark line like cutting straight into the text um I'm seeing use of Papyrus. Papyrus and Comic Sans. Uh, there's a reason that that's a joke in Undertale, is because Papyrus and Comic Sans are considered the two most reviled fonts in um, in, in layout and design. Uh, say what you want about Times New Roman uh, or Arial, they are clean and easy to read. Papyrus and Comic Sans are attempting to be kind of fancy or artsy or fun but are severely overused and not that great. They're severely overused mainly because they're free. They tend to come with like every package. But anyway, getting back into this, what was another one? Jeffy Tepesh. Why is Jeffy Tepesh a good guy? Um, Zanzi Moon, Donkey Doo. Uh, so we have like neutral cards. We have the Magic Wall of Protection, which is good aligned. Like I'm seeing descriptors, like the cards say spell on them. If you want to have uh, rather than using a border, if you want cards to be naughty or nice, it should just say like spell, comma, nice, or spell, comma, neutral, um, or like I'm sure over here it'll say uh, like like spell, comma, na naughty. Or you don't, uh, for the neutral cards, you don't even need that. Do over your mom's calling. Um, the magic potion, this <laughs> magic stuff written in, uh, that's another free font, I'm sure. I'm sure the layout artists are having a field day with this. Bookworm, and these are like, like wood grain. Um, a thing about, about having, like, 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 you've seen some of my videos have, like, a background, a sort of texture like this. The thing about a texture is it needs to be faded, it also needs to be low contrast. Um, like I was showing off Pokemon's custom gouache they had going on. Um, another, yeah, there's a lot of, like, digital, like, artifacting, like, around the worm, like, where the lines, where the colored in, it kind of looks like they just kind of used the fill tool to fill this in without really, without really like, like going over it a second time. I can see like a lot of misalignment on here. It's not a, it's not a great look. Um, so like I said, this is, I think part of it is just the printing because this is from 2007 and then we have the goth type, we have generic kids. Um, so the kids, you, you, you start with four, you basically get like, f uh, four named characters. You can take some of these characters, you can play new characters, um, you can actually discard a copy of a character in order to keep a character from getting discarded. It's a it's a pretty basic, you know, pretty basic uh, rough and tumble. 
Um, while these cards are fairly consistent, uh, one thing you also tend to lose with print on demand is you tend to lose quality. Um, a lot of the older stuff was like, like I just got some cards from Game Crafter. Those are fairly new, but the the edges, the, ed the the cutting edges felt kind of weird. In this game, there are problems with consistency of card size. Like you can see, like there's some like some little gaps in there, like like right here. These two cards. Oh, it's hard to tell with the the white border here, but these two cards are not the same size. It's a little hard to see but this card is slightly longer than the card underneath it. Like, like, I'm putting my thumb right here. I'm aligning the corners here, but there's still just the tiniest bit of run over here. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit hard to tell. I wish this card had a different border, but yeah, the, the, the sizes are inconsistent. Um, the, these are things that just, that just happen with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 print on demand like I said it's especially because of the because of the the olden times um, I think with a lot of these a lot of the games use uh, rather than these there there are ones that use foil packs there are also ones that use miniature tuck boxes uh, redemption is not a print on demand game to my understanding but they do use the tuck boxes um, like, like I said it's perfectly possible to do like an independent game where uh, it, it's clear that like a lot of the packaging is done is done by the people running the operation um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not disparaging. I'm not disparaging the game for its use of print on demand. Uh, part of it is that print on demand has gotten a lot better. Like I said, Keyforge is a game that is 100% print on demand. Um, print on demand. Uh, like I actually, I'm, I actually need to ask what service was used for this one because these, these cards, this tuck box, and the the cards printed in there were were pretty exceptional. These were really. These were really well-run things. Like, it's clearly not Game Crafter. The, the quality is way too high for this to have been done by Game Crafter. Um, but you're also... Uh, I, I haven't really heard of a print-on-demand service that has, like, really good, like, reliable Hall of Foil card printing yet. Um, but it is it is still a good tool. Like I said, a lot of, a lot of the good that can be done with print-on-demand is you can... Uh, yeah, these are, these are not going to go back in in the, in the way. Um... Is one good thing about print on demand is you can like get like a version of your product if you have like if you've been like developing stuff for ages and you, you just really want to finally really want to finally just you know get her done get the get get a get a solid physical version of your game print on demand is a good way to produce that sample and test product that you can show off that you can play with um, if you want to do a Kickstarter it's a good thing to, to have to to show to have like cards that you can play with um it, it, it's it's basically a resource you can use to get onto bigger and better things it's not going to be the end all be all for your game's production um so yeah that is a quick look at monster tykes one of the earliest print on demand games that i've been able to find like i said from 14 years ago like this thing is older than youtube um so yeah that is a look at monster tykes we're going to look at some more games in the future and until next time this is kodak signing off